The 2021 season of Japanese football kicks off soon, and it'll be a campaign unlike any other before. With 20 teams vying for the first division crown and the prestigious title of Best in Japan. This is part one of our team by team preview, introducing you to the clubs of the 2021 Meiji Yasuda J1 League. Starting at the top of the map, J League's northernmost club is Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo. Consadole finished 12th last season, 9 points out of the relegation zone, and 21 points away from the top 4 positions in the table, which grant clubs entry to continental competition. With such a large gulf from the elite pack, Sapporo have looked to mostly bolster the attack. They've added Nigerian striker Gabriel Okachukwu to a core that already boasts Jay Bothroyd, Anderson Lopez, and Thai superstar Chinate. After conceding 58 goals last season, defense remains a bit of a question mark for Sapporo, and in a bid to shore things up at the back, they've gone for some intriguing and perhaps unexpected solutions, including former Japan youth international Takahiro Yanagi and Daihachi Okamura, who played every minute of the J2 League last year. Moving down the map, we continue with Vigalta Sendai, who finished last season with the league's worst defensive record and only a point ahead of last place Shonan Belmare. In hoping for brighter days ahead, the club has turned back to an old face, Makoto Teguramori, who led Vigalta to a second place finish in the 2012 J1 League. Outside of the dugout though, there's been limited turnover for the Sendai side this season, though the attack will now run through Quentin Martinez, who joins from Urawa Reds. Heading on over to Ibaraki, let's check in on Kashima Antlers, who just missed out on AFC Champions League qualification last season after an abysmal start to the 2020 campaign. That magical turnaround was in many ways owed to a revitalized attack that clicked on all cylinders once Japanese rising star Ayase Ueda and Brazilian Everaldo began leading the charge. Everaldo isn't the only Brazilian in the mix though, as Diego Pituca and Arthur join a squad that also includes Juan Alano and Leo Silva. That Brazilian DNA also blends with some homegrown talent at Antlers, and you'll want to keep an eye on rising stars like Ryotaro Araki and Ikuma Sekigawa, who at 19 and 20 years old are quickly becoming Kashima mainstays. Moving over to Saitama next, we take a look at Uraba Reds, who finished in 10th place last season, but have already started an ambitious rebuild under new Spanish manager Ricardo Rodriguez. Rodriguez was the mastermind behind Tokushima Vortis' promotion campaign last season, and he's hoping to have just as much success in the Meiji Yasuda J1 League. However, he's not the only addition to the Urawa outfit coming from J2, as he's bringing with him a number of impressive players from lower down the pyramid, including versatile attacker Takahiro Akimoto. Elsewhere, young defensive midfielder Daiki Kaneko comes in from Shonan Belmare, and experienced right back Daigo Nishi comes in from Vissel Kobe to replace Daiki Hashioka, the 21 year old right back who has taken his first steps into Europe. Overall, it's a lot of turnover for a club looking to take its first steps in a new era. Over to Chiba now for a look at Kashuo Reso, who will look to rebound from two losses early on in the new year, one in the J League YBC Levin Cup final, and another with the departure of last year's MVP and J1 League top scorer, Michael Olunga. The Kenyan striker was an absolute sensation in Japan, scoring an incredible 28 goals last season before a high profile move to Qatar in the offseason. It's difficult to imagine Kashua being able to find a like-for-like -like replacement for Olunga, but Brazilian manager Nelsinho has looked toward home, bringing in Pedro Raul from Botafogo in the Brazilian top division. There's another Brazilian on the way as well, in the heart of midfield with Dodi from Fluminense, and he'll look to combine with the brilliant Ataru Isaka to try and rebuild a balanced attacking core for Kashua Reisal after a difficult offseason. Will they improve on last season's exciting 7th place finish? We'll soon find out. Next, we'll make a short skip to talk about our last team in Part 1, FC Tokyo. The Capital Club began the year defeating Kashua Reisol in the J-League YBC Levan Cup Final, delivering silverware to their fans after a disappointing 6th place finish in the league. It was a far cry from 2019 when FC Tokyo finished as runners-up and looked set for another run at the top in 2020. Continuity, though, has been a bit hard to come by in Tokyo, with summer moves to Europe for Takefusa Kubo and Kento Hashimoto, leaving large holes in the team that have proved difficult to fill in consecutive seasons. 
Nevertheless, there's plenty of emerging talent in the side, including Shuto Abe in the center of the park and central defender Tsuyoshi Watanabe, whose mature play in the back has been turning heads. Really though, it's the seasoned veterans that FC Tokyo can really bank on in the team. Brazilian international center back Bruno Vini joins the legendary Masato Morishige to form an imposing backline core. And the attack is equally deep. Leandro has made a permanent move after a solid league campaign and an MVP performance in FC Tokyo's Cup Triumph. His compatriot Diego Oliveira will look to recapture consistent form when he returns in 2021 after an injury-riddled campaign in 2020. And reliable veterans Keigo Higashi and Kensuke Nagai should help contribute to a team that could, with the right luck and the right chemistry, make the leap back towards elite heights in this season. So that does it for part one of our preview. We hope you enjoyed getting to meet these teams and we'll see you for more fun in part two.